Welcome everyone, welcome. Um, this is Lessons Learned. Uh, my name is Obed Figueroa. Uh, I am so happy again to be with you uh, presenting another practicing physician. Um, Jose Prieto uh, Dio is an osteopathic physician. Um, he is board certified in internal medicine and practices primary care uh, at the Bond Clinic in Winter Haven, Florida. Uh, he attended undergrad uh, at the University of Florida majoring in food science and human nutrition. He then enrolled in medical school, attending Toro College of Osteopathic Medicine in New York, graduating in 2011. Uh, he is married and a father of three. Welcome, welcome, doctor, welcome. Good have, thank you for having me. Yes, yes, uh, it's a pleasure. So just to share with you our intention, um, this platform we are speaking to uh, science majors, pre-med students, and we're just looking to learn from you. Um, learn from your wisdom and all the things that you've been, you know, you've experienced throughout your years uh, in education uh, and now in practice. And so we're really excited to learn more about you. We first begin um, with uh, speed questions, uh, just as a means to get to know you outside of work and, and academia. So if you can give okay. me your first thought um, as we fly through these questions, okay? Sure. All right. So PC or Mac? Uh, Mac. Mac. Um, your favorite movie? It's the most recent movie I've seen that I liked was, was Tenet. Your favorite, uh, restaurant? Uh, favorite restaurant. Um, in Winter Haven, there's this nice little place, Nutwood. Uh, nice little local restaurant. Yeah. Nice. Now, do you have a favorite, uh, food or dessert that after you eat it, you feel like guilty, like, oh, wow. I'm not a huge dessert person, but uh, definitely uh, it would have to be uh, when we go to Nutwood, they have this, uh, this uh, bread pudding. That's really good. They serve it with ice cream and, and you know, caramel and it's warm. So it's, it's, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, f uh, favorite uh, music genre, if you have one? Uh, music is uh, definitely rock. Is there a favorite yeah. song that gets you going? Favorite song? Um, I don't know. I guess when I'm exercising or something, like anything by, you know, Rage Against the Machine. I kind of grew up on that. So. Oh wow! Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, did you have a favorite subject in um, high school? Um, I did. I was always drawn to to the sciences. So definitely biology was, uh, uh, you know, was my favorite uh, class. Uh, the, the, the teacher was, uh, was really good. Um, he, uh, yeah, he was, he was really interpersonal. He was, he was a great teacher. Uh, so I enjoyed him a lot. So, um, do you remember his name? What was his name? Mm -hmm. uh, it was, um, it was Mr. It's okay if you don't. Use, yeah. use or, or you, Ewing. It was so long. I can't remember his name, but he was, um, yeah, he was, he was really good. Uh, so I, I enjoyed his class. So for undergrad, um, what would you say your favorite subject was? Um, undergrad for me was, so, I mean, I always had the goal to, to go into medicine. Um, and, you know, like you said in the introduction, I majored in, in human nutrition. So there were some nutrition classes actually that I really liked and it was the teachers and they were really engaging. Um, I remember also there was a physiology class um, that I took that was that the the, the, uh, the professor was really good. Well, I almost minored. I regret that I didn't in, in Latin American history. Um, mm -hmm. So there were a lot of classes. That's just kind of an interest in, in my history. Oh, I'm sure. So there there are a lot of history classes that I liked. I I wish I would have taken more. Uh, but awesome. Uh, so your favorite yeah. car? Favorite car? Uh, well, right now uh, Alfa Romeo. Ooh. Um, and favorite color? Uh, blue. 
All right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. All right. So let's do this dive. Um, so you know my intention and I'm, I'm looking to see, learn, you know, hear your experience and that experience be shared. So when did you, at what stage um, were you beginning to think about the sciences in your, you know, educational experience? Um, I, I think ever since, I mean, even in, in element, you know, elementary, middle school, uh, I remember I always liked science class, you know, the most. Okay. Um, and as far as my, my family background, my, my grandfather and my, and my uncle are both uh, dentists. Uh, so, um, but, but back in, I'm originally uh, from Peru, okay. uh, but I moved over, I moved over here. My family did uh, when I was one to Florida. Mm -hmm. So, so I grew up here. But um, so anyway, so I mean, I've always had this, um, I guess, this interest, I don't know, because of, you know, family, but uh, I remember my grandfather, you know, he would come and visit. Um, and then he would say, Oh, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna be a doctor when, when you grow up. And then so I, I guess that always stuck with me. So I always had that that inclination. So definitely science classes, uh, you know, since I was I was small, I remember having an interest in them. Now, were you ever, ex you know, we I continue to learn and believe that it's exposure is everything, right? So right. would you see him in practice? Would you go to his, to their practices? No. Cause like I said, I mean, um, he was in, um, he lived in, in Peru, um, mm -hmm. both him and my uncle. So here my, my dad, um, is in, 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 a, in the medical field. Um, so I didn't have an exposure and then I actually, I mean, I had the interest, but no real exposure in that sense. And, okay. And I wasn't even, even going into college, I remember, you know, I knew the goal was to go into medical school, but I didn't know how all that was done or even how, you know, the, 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 uh, the system here worked really because, um, you know, I didn't have any, anybody to ask. Gotcha. So I kind of went into it not knowing a whole lot. Like I didn't even know, you know, I'm an osteopathic physician, but in, in college, I didn't even learn about osteopathic physicians. So I think I was a senior in college and I was applying, you know, to different mm -hmm. schools and I was like, oh, what's this DO thing? Right. So, right. so I, yeah, I, I, I didn't have that. Um, so, so no, I'm glad, I'm glad you spoke to that, you know, because so, I, I would have had assumption based on your, your lineage that you would have been more familiar, even though it's different countries. So, but now I, I get it. Um, yeah. Cause the, the, uh, I guess like the educational system is completely different over there. Cause I think over there, you know, when you're in high school, you're already kind of start on a track to go into. I mean, I think before you enter That's college, right. you're kind of running on a track to go into whatever field you're going to study. Yeah. So it's completely different. And mm -hmm. then plus they, they finish high school earlier. They get into college. Um, they start college earlier, I should say. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, it's completely different. So I didn't have any. Like I awesome. said, yeah. Okay. So um, <laughs> let me understand. Um, so now you, you're starting to prepare for college. Um, who was helping you un understand that and navigate that? Like, how did that happen for you? Applying to undergrad. Mm, getting into high school, I mean, getting into college? Undergrad, yep. Um, well, I mean, I, I was always a good student. So um, just, um, just with, talk you know, with, with other friends, I mean, my other friends, you know, their goal was getting into college. Um, so I kind of navigated that way, you know, taking the SATs, all that kind of stuff. Um, just kind of word, word of mouth, you know, at, at that time, you know, the internet isn't what it was today. So it was, you know, even then it was, it, you know, it was hard to get information, you know, it's not as accessible as today. Was there, so a, it was basically just word of mouth. Um, was there a guidance counselor helping you? Uh, a guidance? Um, yeah. Yeah. So the guidance counselor helped too, um, in high school. Right. Um, so, I mean, obviously, you know, to prepare you to get into college, they said you needed to do this, this and that. So, I mean, there, there was guidance in that aspect. Sure. Um, but, and, but again, and you know, um, as far as medical, not, not really a whole lot. Um, I mean, I got, that happened once I got into college more as, you know, to applying there was the, yeah. Yeah. So we'll get there more guidance into that, yeah. but, but just get, I mean, high school was more just, yeah. High school was just more getting into college and yeah. it was just the guidance counselor, other friends kind of word of mouth type of thing. And so staying with the undergrad, um, so, you know, you're applying to get into the undergrad, you get accepted uh, into your college of choice. Uh, and then at what point did you declare your major? Was that right away or did that take some time? Um, that was right away. So when I remember 
I remember when I got into, um, you know, there's that freshman, I guess, orientation type of period, you know, the summer before you, uh, the fall. So I remember going in and meeting with, um, I guess, I guess it was a guidance counselor. Um, and then you kind of tell them what your plan are, is as far as the future, you know, what your goals are. So I said, you know, you know, my goal was to go into medical school, you know, be a doctor. So with that, she, she said, um, well, you know, that's, it's really hard. You know, most people don't make it. Uh, so it was really already started like that with the negative thing. But, but then she, but then she said, um, you know, there's, you know, there, there are some prerequisites as far as getting, uh, as far as that medical schools require. And I think also the MCAT, as far as, you know, certain courses you have to take, right. she's like, so a lot of people, you know, choose one of two majors, um, because you, you meet all those class requirements. It's either at university of Florida, I think every college is different, but, um, it was microbiology or the, uh, the food science, human nutrition, when it, which I ended up majoring in. Yeah. Um, cool. and she said, you know, uh, and she said, um, you know, like, and then she said, you know, most people don't, don't make it all the way through. So she said, you know, I, you know, I would choose wisely, you know, what your major is, because if you don't get into medical school, then you would want something to fall back on. Hmm. So that's where I was like, well, I know I don't want to do anything with microbiology because <laughs> uh, research or anything, I mean, whatever you do with that, um, I knew I wasn't interested in, but then the, the food, you know, the, the, the food science thing interested me. And um, even if I, you know, uh, I think she explained, you know, you, you can do a new, you could be a nutritionist or whatever with that degree um, and do something like that. And I thought, yeah, I, I mean, that, that also, you know, was interesting to me. So I was like, okay, well, and that's what really why I chose that. And if um, I may ask you, if I may ask you, so, yes. you know, you're okay with that being that being the choice, but what was right. it, you know, what was it that interests you about that space and what was your thinking at that point? With, uh, with nutrition? Yep. It was still like, you, you know, being able to talk to people um, and being able to counsel them, you know, even in some sort of health way, um, even if it wasn't, you know, straight, you know, being a, a physician and, and directing their health in that regard, it was still, um, you know, you could still have an impact because you're still, you know, there, there's clinical nutritionists that, you know, are in the hospital and they're in charge of, you know, doing, you know, making up the diet for the patient or whatever while they're in, while they're hospitalized or even outpatient wise, you know, com you know, with diabetics. And so there's still, you know, health impacts um, that they do, which, you know, interested me. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, you know, and like she said, well, what she told me and, you know, what I ended up choosing it was she said, you know, it's just a, it, it's a backup in case you don't get into medical school. Um, it's something you have there to fall back on. Um, and, and like I said, you know, really, um, the other choice was, I mean, really, I could have majored in anything, um, you know, which I, you know, learned later. Uh, but I guess, you know, right then I, I thought I felt I had the choice between just those two. Right. Um, and, um, and she, um, you know, she said, yeah, and I knew, my, like I said, microbiology didn't interest me at all. Um, I, I couldn't see working in the lab or anything like that. It's just not, yeah. I just didn't find it particularly interesting. So if I may ask you, so staying at that same, same time period, what was your thinking and, and, and it probably I'm sure evolved as while you were in undergrad but like what were you thinking like what was your your ambition was yes to get into med school but in what kind of way were you conceptualizing the role you wanted to play um in undergrad you know the role you wanted to play at, um for your future like what were you thinking then at that stage undergrad i can do this so i desire to do that like what was what were you thinking? um i think in undergrad like i said i mean i going into it i knew i had that goal of, of becoming a physician but as far as you know the details of how exactly to achieve that i i wasn't sure because i didn't have um i, I didn't have a place where i could go and, and get that information okay uh, so when, like I said, when I, when I initially, that, that I, I remember distinctly that orient, that talk with the, with that, with that guidance counselor, because basically I chose my major right then and there. And, and like I said, you know, I felt I had the two choices between those two, either nutrition or microbiology. Uh -huh. um, I didn't really know that. I mean, really you can major in anything. You just have to, you know, meet those prerequisite courses, okay. um, which really are, are general courses that you could take, you know, first, second year of, of, of college. So I didn't know a lot. So, uh, you know, I chose that, that major. Uh, I mean, I'm glad I did. I mean, I enjoyed it. Um, but um, yeah, during, uh, during college, um, I didn't really know what else to do. I was, you know, I was trying to find what else. And I think what helped, I mean, I joined um, the, um, 
AMSA, the American American Medical Student Associate or pre med, yep. pre med AMSA. Yep. Um, I didn't even know. I mean, now I know there's this, there's the osteopathic version, the the SOMA, pre med SOMA, which I don't know even if University of Florida had it. They might have. They probably did, but I just didn't even know, so I didn't I didn't join them. Gotcha. But I remember in and in, in, you know pre med AMSA, um, that's where I kind of learned a lot more because there was other students obviously interested in going into medical school and. I kind of mm-hmm. learned what I had to do, you know, uh, you know, it, that, that um, you know, obviously they recommended to, to start, you know, shadowing, uh, you know, uh, physicians uh, or, or getting experience. Um, they would have, uh, they, they had, um, they had like shadowing experiences, even in like the OR. Cause I remember going into like, they had a VA hospital there and I remember going into the OR um, to see, um, I think it was a hernia repair. Um then you know as a college student um i did shadow into er2 um a few times um, a, a doctor there gotcha. um so it was different experience that i that i did through and you know like i said that organization uh, mm-hmm. that that really opened the doors if i hadn't joined them i, I think i wouldn't have known what to do and, and really yeah kind of, uh, yeah you're kind of you know um helping us identify like what what's key to success right and it's like getting that information right. um so appreciate your honesty with that now, if I could ask you, at, during your undergrad, um, did you experience um, academic challenges in any way? And could you share how you, you know, got through that? Um, yeah, I did. I, I think uh, in college, my, my biggest struggle was with, was with organic chemistry. Um, that class, um, I don't know. I mean, one, I didn't enjoy, I didn't enjoy the, the subject matter. Um, and, and then plus, um, it, and it was one of these, um, Again, you know, University of Florida is this huge university, so um, organic chemistry, you know, is a prerequisite for a lot of different sciences to begin with. So it was a huge class. It was like, you know, 500 kids or whatever oh. in that class. And yeah. and so it was very in, uh, impersonal. Um, and then plus, I didn't really enjoy, again, I didn't enjoy the subject matter. So, I mean, these are all things I, I probably could have done better. But anyway, I, str- I definitely struggled through that class. Uh, you know, I barely, I barely passed it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, so definitely, yeah, I wish I would have done better uh, in in that class, uh, but that, it was definitely a struggle, organic chemistry, and I, I you know, had to get, uh, had tutoring in it just to, to, to get through it. Now, in, during your undergrad, did you, okay, so that was one course you're referring to, but, you know, right. did you already have the, the skills to know how to study well, or was this something you eventually developed and learned, or, you know? Um. I think I think for me um, it was kind of discovering um, that I I did know how to how to study, um, but I had a bad habit of if I wasn't really interested in the uh, you know in in the subject or in that matter, then I had a hard time focusing or staying focused. So I think that was the problem with you know chemistry or organic chemistry was just that I had a um, you know I I knew I had to study, but then. Um, I would make any excuse in the world to do something else rather than that. No, or or tough. even when I was studying it, it was hard for me to focus, stay focused on the, on that. And um, so that, that was it. I mean, it was just mainly uh, just learning how to remain focused and, and knowing, you know, I mean, I, 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 I didn't enjoy organic chemistry, but you know, it, it's a means to an end. So I had to um, just learn like, you know, you, you have to get through it if I want to advance to the next stage. So then it's, you know, doing, employing different things. Like I said, I mean, I got some tutoring in it and that helped. And, and, um, and then, you know, you develop, you know, there was, I had different friends in the class. So, you know, we would get together and study too in groups and that, and that helped. Okay. Um, so it was kind of learning those things. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As, no, as no, things really, really good to hear this. Um, okay, so we can move forward. Um, now you are preparing to apply um, to doctorate level uh, programs, and how was that experience like? Um, who helped you with that, um, or did, how did you find the information on how to navigate it? This is undergrad going into the doctorate. Into medical, right? Um, again, I, I think it was through the, the help of um, of the uh, those, those pre medical associations, so the um, the uh, pre med AMSA. Uh, that I was a member of, uh, um, like I said, they, they kind of held these different meetings and like workshops and telling you, you know, you need to have this and this and this to, to apply to medical school and you should be, you know, junior year. And remember, uh, you know, this is when you should start thinking about, um, 
you know, doing really well and already, you know, over that summer, you know, the, the summer between junior and senior, getting your application ready and already thinking of which medical schools to apply to and sending your, all those, all those things in and take the MCAT. And so it was really through then that I kind of learned all that um, mm -hmm. and, and that whole process. Um, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. The, um, okay, so that you, you know, you shared that you learned about osteopathic medicine at, you know, towards the latter of your academic experience. And, you know, what was your thinking back then? Um, you, you were, I'm sure, more, you know, familiar with uh, allopathic and then you hear about osteopathic. Like, do you want to share what your thinking was and did you apply to both? I mean, what was, what was your strategy? Well, initially, like I said, I mean, I was very ignorant um, as far as the, the whole process, uh, you know, application process. Like I said, I mean, basically everything I, I knew was through this, was through these meetings and, and in the, you know, pre-med AMSA. Mm -hmm. I remember there was one meeting where they, uh, I think it was like a, um, it was one of these workshops where they have different schools, medical schools come in and talk to the students, like, you know, undergraduate students, kind of, a, you know, like a fair, like a health fair, I guess. To, mm -hmm. in that sense but they had different schools um different medical schools coming in and talking and some of them were um i didn't even know about like you know caribbean schools because there were some caribbean schools and i'm like you know from saint george or you know and i'm like you know well, what is this <laughs> so i didn't even know that that was uh you know that existed and then there was um and then also then the osteopathic schools there were some osteopathic schools there right. and then again I, I really had no idea what you know what, what that was or you know that it was even an option Mm -hmm. So it, it, that, that first year on, to be honest, I didn't apply. I didn't apply to any osteopathic schools. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was just allopathic schools. Right. And, um, and that, that first year, uh, I mean, right after college, I mean, I didn't get in, I didn't get into medical school. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, why I think, you know, like I said, I mean, I struggled in organic chemistry, so I didn't, you know, I barely passed <laughs> that class. Um, so I think, you know, that, that's a, you know, whenever people are looking at the applications, I'm sure that's, that's a flag that's on there. Mm -hmm. um, and then also my MCAT score uh, was an average score. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't awful, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't anything extraordinary. And in terms of strategizing to be successful in getting into medical school, did you redo any coursework or did you do any classes after undergrad to, to enhance your profile? Yeah. So, you know, when, when that happened, like I said, I mean, uh, as far as looking at my application, what I, what I thought were um, low points were, um, were uh, like I said, the organic chemistry grade, which like I said, I barely passed. Um, so I definitely thought that if I had, if I improved that, then, you know, it, it might show improvement. So I did, I think there was an online course that I started, that I started taking um, that, uh, but I don't, I, I don't think I ever finished it. Um, and then the same was, uh, and then the MCAT, I really don't remember. I might've taken it twice. I, I did. Uh, so I did take a course, like I said, in organic chemistry, but I don't think I completed it. Really what, what happened was, cause like I said, I got the degree in human nutrition. Um, so I worked in the, um, I got a job with the, uh, with the health department, uh, the Florida health department here, um, in the, um, there's this program called WIC, mm -hmm. which is women, infants, and children, and they provide, you know, assistance to, um, you know, pregnant women and then, um, you know, and then with, with children up to the age of five mm -hmm. with, uh, with, with food. Um, so it's kind of like food stamps, but in, in the sense that um, it's only healthy foods. So it's, it's limited. Um, and then plus they have to do, uh, a, they have to sit down and have counseling with a nutritionist, um, you know, to, uh, before they get the, you know, their, their, their coupons or, or what have you. Right. So then I would sit down with them and I would, you know, you know, uh, counsel them on, on eating healthy and then, you know, uh, the same for, you know, their, their, their children. And so I, I, I worked there for, for a year. Um, and, and I enjoyed it. I mean, it was, uh, you know, it, it was gratifying and, and, mm -hmm. and I liked doing it and, and talking to different people in that aspect. Mm -hmm. Um, so I did that for a year and I think, I think that probably helped, help my, my resume some. Um, and then plus, you know, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't give up because, um, you know, I said I still had the ultimate goal. You know, I still wanted to be a physician. So I, I, uh, I still, you know, persisted in that. Um, and, and that's why subsequently then the following year, then I reapplied again. Um, and this time, you know, I applied to more schools. I applied to, you know, osteo, including osteopathic schools. And, um, and, you know, and then I got into, into Toro. Interesting. Okay. Thanks for sharing that. 
So now you get into to med school. Um, so how was that experience for you? Um, you know, did you, did you have to change your strategies for studying? I mean, how did you take all that in? How, how did you, you know, manage, uh, you know, the experience? Well, yeah, I mean, medical school was a, a huge change in, in a lot of ways. I mean, not just academically, but like the whole life, you know, lifestyle. Um, you know, I grew, like I said, I grew up in Florida. So it was completely different, you know, than to New York City. Um, so it was just that that whole change there. And plus, you know, uh, when I got there, I didn't know anybody. You know, I didn't have any family or, or friends or anything. So then there was there was that. And um, so it was just a, a whole change in a lot of in, in a lot of ways. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, uh, I think academically, um, it, it was a big adjustment compared to college, uh, just cause everything moved at a faster pace. There's a, you know, there, there's a whole, you know, load of, of information that you're, you're supposed to, you know, learn and, and, and capture in, in a sh short amount of time. So yeah, it was, it was difficult. Um, definitely the first two years of medical school, uh, which is more the traditionally more the lecture learning and that was was a uh, you know it was a struggle um, so yeah it, it was uh, definitely um, learning to, how to how to manage that what was was a challenge did you, did, you, um, did you do it solo did you do it as a group work with working within a group how'd you manage I, I mainly I mainly did it solo uh, medical school uh, I mainly did it solo. I think I would have benefited from doing group stuff, but for whatever reason, um, I, I just didn't. Uh, so it was it was mainly solo okay. uh, that, that I did it. Yeah. And and your the learning styles or the the, the study techniques you adapted to that change of context. Did you carry over um, the same undergraduate practices? Some of it changed. I mean, definitely I was studying a lot more than I did in, in undergraduate. So I just had a, uh, I just had to be better about uh, being more diligent on studying. So definitely, I mean, it, it was pretty much studying all the time. Um, but I would, you know, take breaks in between or, you know, obviously it would become overwhelming uh, to just sit there and study. And I learned, you know, my style, like I can't, or even before tests and things, I know there were some, you know, you hear, you know, some, people claim that, you know, all nighters and things like that. I could never do that. Cause I, I, I just can't, after a certain amount of time at night, I, I just stop functioning. So I need to sleep. Somebody so even if it was that. just four, yeah, even if it was only four hours, uh, I would, I would, you know, definitely I'm a, I'm a morning person. So I, I definitely can wake up and start studying. Um, and then towards the end of the day, I just start crashing. So I need, you know, I, I need to at least sleep a few hours and then I'll, you know, then I can wake up and, and start again. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I, I definitely learned that in, in med school because uh, in college, it never didn't really come up all that much. Yeah, I felt um, so bad for you guys. I really did. I just felt so bad. Yeah. <laughs> really did. Uh, um, and when we were able to slip out and do a little fun things, I would just so appreciate that. You know, when we slip out for a minute and be able to do a little social something to see you guys laughing and, and just so when you can have. Yeah, I think I, I think that's important. I think. Um, well, I, I think in medical school or even residency or even now, I think, uh, I think mental health is a big, you know, it's an important issue. And I think sometimes it's not, I think it's overlooked sometimes. Um, and it's definitely, uh, it's definitely a big thing. And I, th uh, you know, I wish, I don't know, maybe it is being implemented more now in, um, in medical schools, but if it's not, then I hope that it's, um, it's something that needs to be looked into more. Yeah. Uh, Cause I, I, I think that depression is a, you know, it's a big, it's a big problem. I think in, in medical school, I mean, I definitely had points where I felt that way. So mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot, of, I mean, it's overwhelming. It's a lot of work. Uh, you know, you're constantly, you know, trying to pass this test, that test and thinking, you know, oh, am I going to make it? Am I going to, you know, so. You know. Um, so I'm curious, you, you know, um, you know, my background and, and, and my interest in terms of representation uh, within medicine. Um, the numbers are pretty much the same. There's, you know, it, it does vary depending on where you are. You may see greater representation, right? But as a whole, yeah. the numbers of, of you know, Latino and, and um, Black are still low uh, in medicine. Right. I'm wondering in your experience, um, if you wouldn't mind to share, um, see now you're in practice. Um, what right. are you observing? Um, are you the only in that space or is your context different? 
Um, my, so as far as my practice, Bond Clinic, um, it's a multi-specialty group. So, um, you know, I'm one of the primary care physicians, but there's about 16, I think, other primary care phys physicians at that clinic. You know, and then we have, you know, surgeons, cardiologists, urologists, you know, we pretty much have almost, almost every specialty. Um, but um, out of that group, I mean, there is a big um, Latino, Latino group, uh, Puerto Rican, especially. Uh -huh. um, so there is, there's quite a bit of us there. Nice. Um, I think Florida. Uh, that's Florida. <laughs> yeah, it's Florida. Uh, so, but, uh, but as far as, um, I mean, there is an underpresentation of, of, of black. I don't think we have any, any black physician at, at our practice. Okay. Um, so there's, there is that. So, I mean, I, I do see there. And actually in Winter Haven, I mean, there is, there is a sizable black population because I do have, I, I do have plenty of black patients. Okay. Um, and um, I think even more so than Hispanic. I mean, I, I have quite a bit of Hispanic patients, but I think that's because I'm just Hispanic. So they, they might gravitate more, you know, to no, see me, but. Yeah, they most certainly do. Um, yeah. You know, that's like, it's the cultural connection, being able to relate and, and they. Right. They, yeah. They're, they're more receptive because they believe that you can relate to their, their experience, their culture. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, I think, you know, as a physician, I, I, I try to treat, uh, you know, I treat everybody equally. Um, but I mean, sometimes, yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, different patients have different needs. Uh, you know, majority of my population is, is white, actually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, but, you know, so not to say you, you, you know, have to be the same race to treat somebody, but I mean, yeah, it does help. And especially with, with, with black patients, I think just because of, you know, historically, you know, the, uh, you know, the abuse they suffered, you know, from, from medical society, you know, historically, I think there's that mistrust that, that a lot of them have. So I think, yeah, definitely if, if there were, you know, if, if we had more, you know, black physicians, definitely, I think it would be, it, it would definitely uh, be a help and, and, and help that population. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, more effective. Um, I right. appreciate you, you sharing that. Um, could you share a day in the life for you? You know, what does that look like for you? Yeah, so, um, so primary care, um, so you know, the clinic hours, you know, are, um, you know, eight to five is when we're open. Uh, but I generally get there, you know, it depends, seven, seven thirty, uh, just to start, you know, there's always paperwork. So just, uh, kind of, um, get in there, uh, you know, sit down, have a cup of coffee and then start, uh, start going through, uh, you know, different paperwork that might've been left over from the previous day, or, you know, there's always lab results, some type of result coming in for different patients. So kind of going through that, you know, before the day, kind of gets rolling and then you know first patients in at 8 15 um and then um you know i'm seeing i um, uh, have patients until 11 15 mm -hmm. um and you know i'm seeing anywhere between 10 and 12 patients in that in that uh in that time frame mm -hmm. um, so I, it's a pretty busy practice um so i'm seeing them in you know their follow-ups you know some of them are acute visits um in you know with primary care i'm dealing with everything you know from you know, high blood pressure, diabetes, you know, heart disease, you know, it's everything. Yeah. Um, so, it's, and, and trying to go into all, all, you know, trying to hit all that, you know, in, in a short amount of time is sometimes difficult and, and challenging, but. Yeah, how's COVID uh, hitting you? Hitting, hitting the practice? COVID, um, when it initially, you know, when, when it initially appeared here, you know, March and April, Everybody got, you know, majority of my patients, it's Florida. So uh, 80, 80 plus percent of my practice is Medicare. Um, so they're all, you know, elderly and, and, you know, they were afraid, you know, to come in. We never closed, but they, um, you know, they were scared to come in. So a lot of them ended up, um, you know, canceling. So we, we got, uh, we definitely took a hit. I think volume was down like 70%, you know, in those, those two months. But then we started doing, uh, you know, Medicare allowed telemedicine to be used which um, the, the special to, to use for everybody. Cause there, I mean, you could use it before, but there was different caveats what made it difficult gotcha. to use previously. So I, I wasn't using telemedicine before COVID. So then, you know, during COVID I started using it and we had some, but again, I think because of the population, Medicare and, and, you know, being able to use, even though it's easy, I mean, you can do it with a smartphone. A lot of them still, you know, had difficulty with it. So, I mean, we did get some telemedicine, but it wasn't a huge, you know, a huge amount of, of people using it. Uh, mm -hmm. But then slowly, you know, towards June and July, which actually in Florida was worse because that's when we had the, we had that second wave. Uh, we had people coming in like normal almost in, in, our, in our practice. 
Mm. Um, so, so right now, I mean, as far as volume wise, it's not, it's not different than before. Obviously we're doing all the precautions, wearing the mask. Yeah. Definitely heroes. Yeah. Definitely heroes for us. Um, wow. So you shared a lot. Is there anything more that you wanted to, to share with the science majors? Um, I, I think definitely, uh, um, I would say the key, I think to, to all this is, is to stay persistent. And I mean, if this is ultimately your goal, it's just to keep, uh, it's just to keep at it. Um, and I think, um, uh, and, and then, you know, definitely make use of the resources available. So those organizations, you know, you know, those, those different pre-med organizations, I think they can, they can, uh, mm-hmm. they can provide a lot of insight because, you know, there's, um, w- once I got to medical school, I saw there was people of all different types of backgrounds. There were people there that had, you know, some people did get in straight out of college. Um, there were some people that had a gap of a year or two, uh, but there were some people that had, you know, more that they had already started a different career. Um, and then they were, you know, 10 years out of, you know, 10, 15 years out of school. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, there, there's, there's, you know, there's a whole host of, of, of different people, different backgrounds that go into medical school. And I think it's just a matter of if that's your goal. Um, then you want to do everything possible to just keep at it and, and not lose, lose sight of that and not, uh, not give up. Um, I think that's the, the, the main advice I, I would give. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right. So this ends okay. this episode. Uh, and I appreciate your time. Uh, please say thank, uh, thank your wife as well for giving us a little time with you. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yes, appreciate you and pr- very proud of you. All right. Thank you, Ovid. Yeah, it was, it was good talking to you. All right. See you guys next week. Bye.